tough angle for me. You get to see the recession that's taking place on my head. Not quite as newsworthy as the recession taking place in the financial markets. We'll discuss that today. Want to know why the markets went up today? We're looking at it. Jobs report better than expected. Seesaw, hee haw. That's the kind of market we're in. We're going to be up one day, down the next day. Things are going wild. We'll take a look at everything today. Mortgage rates suffer a little bit today, down 41 basis points. But it was a lot worse at the beginning of the day. If you're following my reels on any of the Instagrams, uh, the Facebooks, the Twitters, I'm putting reels up every day now. Um, probably going to start the day with those just to kind of say, hey, here's wherever how things are looking this morning. Um, and then hopefully get the videos in the evening. So it could have been worse. Um, not a pretty look, not a great look, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. Today, let me hold on. Hold on. Let me get myself right here. I want to talk about the 2-1 buy down. What is this thing? What is this 2-1 buy down? What does it mean? How does it work? So I'm going to quote you this based on primarily the rules of one bank, United Wholesale Mortgage. They are the biggest wholesale bank. Um, so I'm going to basically give you their rules. Different banks may have different rules on this, so keep that in mind. Okay. But the 2 1 buy down um, is what everybody's talking about. So, how does it work? What is it? Is this a gimmick? Is it a scam? Um, you know, me personally, I made a video on this before and I think I said, yeah, it's gimmicky. It's not quite a gimmick, but it's gimmicky. Um, it doesn't really save anything. You know, you're paying for it. It's Robin Peter to pay Paul. And all that stuff is kind of true. But let me tell you where it does make sense and where it doesn't. Okay. First of all, what does it actually mean? What is happening? Um, you can use this for VA loans, FHA loans, conventional loans, even investment property purchases, but the seller must pay for the entirety of the subsidy. That's the rule. So the seller must pay for the total subsidy. And essentially what they're doing is they're paying money through the subsidy to help lower your payment each month for the first couple of years of the loan. That's really what it is. So what you can do with this calculator, and by the way, I'll provide this. This is just a simple Excel sheet. I'll provide this to anyone who wants it. I don't care if you're in loans. I've already sent this to other LOs. You know, I don't worry about that stuff. They can't compete with moi. Go ahead. Have at it, guys. Here's some weapons. See you out there. Um, okay. So look, here's, here's what you start with. What's the loan amount? Okay, I have a situation that I'm working on right now. So I'm going to use that one. 65,000 VA. And let's say the rate is 6%. percent so five point eight seven five today. But we're going to keep it at 6. It makes things nice and pretty. So 6%. Now, this tells us what the principal and interest payment is right here. Okay? And then from that is how you get the calculation for the subsidy. So the 2-1 buy-down means that the interest rate here, you can see year one, the interest rate is 4%. So it's 2% lower. That's the 2-1. And then the second year, it's 1% lower than what they actually qualified for at the 6%. The final 28 years of the loan, it's at 6%. So you get the fully amortized payment. So what this shows you is here's the monthly payment at 4%. And so this is how much per month the subsidy needs to be times 12. Here's the annual subsidy for both years. Boom, boom. The total there right here, total subsidy. So if my client in this situation wanted to do the two one buy down on this VA purchase, they would need the seller to credit 15 grand. 14,973. Let's call it 15 grand. Okay. So 15 grand in seller concessions will get you a 4% payment. Now you can see the payment is $824 a month less. That sounds pretty good right now, but Derek, it's going to go up if we're selling people. Now you have to fully, you have to qualify for the fully amortized payment. So you still have to qualify. It's not like you're using this lower one to qualify. So a lot of people will ask the question like, well, isn't this just like what happened before the crash? People were doing arms, people were doing this, were doing that. People were qualifying for those pay option arms without having to qualify for a fully amortized payment. That didn't come until later, like when the crash started. So people were qualifying for the teaser payment and they didn't have to qualify for the full payment. Now you have to qualify for the full payment. So I don't think that part is really a problem for this. Um, people might say, well, hey, what if we're going to just all of a sudden, you know, in a couple of years, people's payments are going to be going up um, to this fully amortized payment. What if rates don't go down? Okay. Well, if that's the case, at the end of the day, it's just six, one half dozen the other. You're the seller is giving you a credit of 15 grand, which you could use for a lower purchase price. So they could instead, he will do a quick math here. Instead of getting the 15 grand subsidy, let's say they just got a lower purchase price by 15 grand. So 660, right? 
Now the payment goes down to 39.57. So well, I should have looked what it was, 39.57, 39.57. So 90 bucks less. So it would be that if they just took the, the lower price, the payment would be $90 less per month and they would owe less on the home. Um, but the, the starting payment would be, you know, it wouldn't be 32, 22 per month. It would be, you know, $730 more than that. So why, when does this make sense? Okay. This makes sense. If you have a buyer who really believes that rates are going to drop and the payment is very crucial for them to feel good about breathing room, even if they're qualified, they would just feel better with the breathing room on the payment. And they're willing to pay a higher price for the home by 15 grand to get the subsidy and get the lower payment. And in their mind, rates are going to drop in the next couple of years, which I would agree with them in that case. So they'll be able to refinance and get closer to where that initial payment is. Can you count on this? No. Is it guaranteed to happen? No. Is it, does it appear to be highly likely? Yeah. But anything can happen in financial markets. What I always say, things can always go up or down. You have to be prepared for every situation. Never count on it doing one thing or the other. Even when I am certain things are going to do certain certain ways based on the way technicals lay out, always surprises me all the time, constantly. So <clears throat> always be prepared. But that's so so that's when you you should do it. If it's what you need to feel comfortable, you know that hey, I'm getting a good price because this house we're getting for six seventy five, it would have sold for seven fifty. You know, just a few months ago, we're getting it for six seventy five. I'll take that. I don't need to get six sixty. I'll take six seventy five and give me the fifteen grand and give me that thirty two twenty two payment, baby. That's when it makes sense. When that's the way you're looking, like hey, we've already got a steep discount here. We're already negotiating really, really well. Let's go ahead and just take the the six seventy five and use the fifteen grand to subsidize the payment because it is you're still getting the money, but you're essentially borrowing it from yourself because you're taking the higher loan amount to borrow the money from yourself to subsidize your own payment. <laughs> but essentially you say, oh, well, the seller is giving you the credit. Yeah, but the seller is netting the same either way. Like the seller is willing to take 660. That's the reason why they would give you the 15 grand. So when it doesn't make sense is if you plan to refinance. Now, by the way, if you refinance early. So what happens, Derek, if let's say I do this to one buy down and it's great and I love my payment, but let's say rates by March are at 4%. And I can refinance into it fixed for 30 years, but I, I've got this 2-1 sub day. I just started it. I'm only five, six months, five payments in. When you do your refinance and you go to pay off this loan, that subsidy is still in there. It's still yours. It's not lost. It's deducted against the payoff. So it does not hurt you in that regard. That's something that's important to note. Now, the seller does need to pay. So I'm going to write this down. Seller does need to pay for all of this. Also, you can do this on investment properties, but investment properties, 2%, uh, this is not a good place, but here we go. 2% max concessions on investment properties. Investors really should probably look at this. Um, if you're an investor and you are buying investment properties right here using financing, this is something to probably look at. Um, you know, if, if you can negotiate it just because obviously cash flow, especially the initial couple years on investment properties, you know, you may have to do some stuff. You have to put some money into, you have to do this, that, find a tenant, you know, you kind of got to get things dialed in, but this total subsidy amount must be 2% of the purchase price or it ain't going to work. So that's one thing where it's, it can get really, really close, you know, and it should be there, but you, it's got to cover the entire amount. So 2% max concessions on investment properties. The seller has to pay for all of it, okay? So it it does make sense in several instances. Where, where does it not make sense? It doesn't make sense if you say, plan to pay the home off. You know, so even though you'll get the money back, I guess, I guess in that case, it doesn't matter. It's just a push because you are paying interest on the loan. Yeah, I mean, if you plan to pay it off, soon like let's say you have another house that you're planning on selling once this one gets in and you're just going to pay it off then it really makes no sense your rate who cares what your rate is you know um but there isn't really a whole lot of downside here because of the fact that you're capturing this even if you sell the place or refinance early um it does feel gimmicky especially when rates go up for people to start talking about this but truthfully when you break down the math and you look at how it's laid out 
it does make sense, especially for, for buyers who, who know they're getting a good price, but they're having a hard time pulling the trigger because the payment's not where they want it to be. They really want their payment to be, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars a month less than what it's coming out to be. That's when it makes sense. So this calculator is really easy. All you do is put in the loan amount, whatever it is, put in the interest rate, whatever it is. Oh, what happened there? Come on. Oh, sorry. This is not an editable version. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, it is. Five percent. Okay. So use you put the rate in there, put the years, the term in here. It's almost always going to be thirty, and it will spit out the payment for you right here. And that uh, the rest of the calculations will happen automatically. So you just fill in these input spots right here. If you want to look at a two one buy down, how does it work? What would it do for my payment? And then you just have to negotiate the concessions. This can you can do this for. Uh, let me just write this up here. VA, FHA conventional all okay all right so you can do it for all those loans it can happen with any of them because essentially it's just a payment subsidy calculation it's almost like a separate little mini escrow account so it's not as much of a gimmick as i remembered it being um you gotta remember old man evans here 22 years and we haven't seen this in a while a, a two one buy down market but we're in one we're in one right now and it's something that a lot of people are going to be asking about it's something that a lot of buyers are going to want to do. So it's best. What do we do? What do we know about marketing? What do we know about customer service? It's all about giving people what they want. What is business? Business can be boiled down to simply this. You give people what they want. They give you money. In this case, they buy a house with you or whatever. So what do people want? People want lower payments. How can we help them get those? This is one of the ways we need to listen to people. Always listen to people, adjust your business, build your business to serve people, to deliver what they want. And right now people want lower payments. Here's a way to do it where it doesn't necessarily have to cost them a lot, although essentially they do pay for it, right? You are paying for it. If the seller would take a lower price. You're taking, you're agreeing to a higher price, so they'll give you some money back. You are essentially paying for it, but it's a much more palatable way to do it if you want to ultimately lower your rate. Now you can do a long-term buy down too, with that same money, you could use that same 15 grand that we had in our example earlier. You could use that same 15, you know, 14, 973 to buy your rate down permanently. But then if you refi, it's just all lost. So that's the difference. It's all lost in that situation. So hopefully that makes sense. I wanted to cover that. Um, actually, let me look over here. There's some people who are worried about this, thinking that this is kind of like a bad deal um, and that, you know, this is going to cause problems if too many people do this. It's like arms back in the day. It's like pay option arms, um, you know, the negative amortization products and stuff like that. It's not like that at all. It's clean. It's all it's it's all money that's in the transaction. Um, there's no leverage. You have to fully qualify for the full rate. And the money is essentially the buyer's money that they could get in one way or the other. They have the seller credited to them or they could get a lower sales price. And if they choose to have it credited to them, they can use that money to subsidize the payment to make it more palatable. Now, while we're at the cycle high or what appears to be a cycle high of interest rates, you do this if you believe rates are going lower. But what if rates go up? Well, if rates go up, guess what? You're still fixed. You still got the 6%. Whether you... Did the subsidy to one buy down or not? You still have a fixed rate. So it adjusts up on year three to 6%. And if rates are at 8%, you're still golden, right? So there's no downside there either. It's not like an arm where you have you have risk. You know what your rate's going to be. Year one will be four, year two will be five, year three will be six. And we're using, I'm just using a, a VA scenario that I'm actually working on right now. So... You can do it on investment properties, 2% max concessions. The seller has to pay for the entire amount of the subsidy. You can do this on FHA, VA, conventional all day, all right? So for that one, if you have questions, give me a shout. I get my screen squared away over here. Let me close this down. All right, and we'll get back to what we're looking at. So if you need a quote, we, remember we charge no fees. We have wholesale interest rates. I'm trying to hook people up. Email me, call me, text me, and I will hook you your friends, 
your family, your mama, your baby mama, whoever you got, I will hook you up. Okay. Let's take a look at what happened here with rates. So bad news, guys, on this mortgage bond chart is that our channel got violated today. Just kind of sad, you know, just so I don't have a want wall. I need more. Where's I need a want wall. Hated it. Yeah, so our, our channel got violated. We, we, we broke down below, but we have a pretty bullish candle um, here. So I'm hoping that we can jump in tomorrow with something up here. And maybe go test this resistance level. That'd be good. Rates got worse today by about an eighth of a percent. Um, still, overall, average rates just way higher than ours. Um, you know, we're in 5.875 for these right here, FHAVA, which is our sweet spot. Jumbo is pretty much right on. Um, this uh, conventional is pretty much right on. You know, for an average rate, I would I would dig that. The cool thing about FHA and VA is if you have a 640 or higher, you're pretty much getting the best rates and it's going to be much better than this. So um, it's not too uncommon in these situations for banks to put a little more margin in the FHA, VA. That's where their juice is usually. And um, then they might be just, it's getting a little tight on the other side of it, on the other products. So they're trying to make their money on that side. You have loss leaders and you have profit centers, just like everything else. By the way, we're live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter. One of these days, we'll be adding Instagram on there when StreamYard gets that going. Uh, but those are those are those. Okay, here's so back to the same concept of okay, I've seen this meme shared a bunch today, so I just wanted to kind of address it. It's one of the funniest memes of all time. I mean, you can put so many things in here. I die laughing. Is this Cameron Diaz? Will someone answer that question for me? It looks like her. I just don't know if it is, but it looks like her. And and then there's this cat over here. And so it's always this lady yelling and this cat being just chill. I'm not paying 7% interest rate on a mortgage. This is every buyer right now. So many buyers right now. And I can tell you exactly what's happening, guys. I've seen this before. I know exactly what's happening right now. So many buyers are pushing to the right. They're just stacking up on each other and they don't realize it. So right now, buyers don't want anything to do with this market. They're saying everything to get get away from trying to be involved in this market. Well, I'll wait till the market's better. Oh, okay, so you want a competition. You want higher prices. Got it. Um, I'll wait till rates are lower. Understood. You like competition and higher prices. Got it. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna wait till next year. So many people are planning on buying next year. So everyone's pushing to the right and stacking up. Though that's the fuel for the next run higher. And I can tell you, it's not that far away. It could be next year. It could be middle next year. It could be a year from now. You know, but it's not that far away. The next mega run higher is coming. Rates have to come down. There's absolutely no way they can stay this high forever. Government can't afford to pay its bills if that's the case. And everyone knows it. In fact, I got a great article today I think you should read. And this was sent to me um, by a viewer. Really good one. Really, really good one. Business Journal uh, from the Horton School of the University of Pennsylvania. They talk with um, this faculty here. There's an author. They're just a really intelligent, high-level conversation. Academics who are, who have no agenda and who are just like sort of investigating and reporting on the Federal Reserve's actions, the reality behind interest rates, the Fed's fiscal strategy. Um, here's a really good one on whether housing prices will fall. This is terrific stuff. I mean, really, really good, high-level stuff. I typically frown upon the academic world. I tend to be the guy who's like can't stand it. Like the, I see stuff like this. University is going to continue to suffer some colleges struggle with enrollment declines. Let them burn. Hell with them. These places have been fleecing, fleecing young, young adults for decades, fleecing them. I'm the thing I'm most proud of in my life was only going to college for two years for being an 18 year old was on my own, very independent and seeing college for the bullshit that it is and going, you know what? I am not participating in this charade. And, um, I'm going to, I went to, I did go to college for two years. I went to a local school to pay in state tuition. I think it was $4,500 a year or something back then. If you can imagine that I had no debt. I only reason I went was to party. I'll be honest with you. I wanted the social aspects. I went there. I took classes I was interested in. I was on no course at all. The counselor was like, you're not making up to a grab. Like I'm not getting a degree. Okay. Not going to happen. Let them burn. Fleecing people. Forget you guys. Peace out. But anyway, these guys, this discussion 
legit. Um, check it out. If nothing else from this, listen to this. They're right on the money. And they're telling you everything straight up right here. It's a lot of things you've heard from me already. But if you'd like to hear it from other people, check it out. These are not real estate people, though. They're not in the game. They're just reviewing the data. Um, so I think that's really, really, really worth a listen. That said, with rates, with the current bond structure that we have, with what's going on in the market, you saw again today, jobs report is the reason why everything went up. So jobs report was good. Started the day off looking ugly. It was not pretty. Um, we did not have like good action today at the open. I will show you this right here. This is the DXY. And, you know, we when we started the morning, we were already up here, like at the highs for the day. And we receded from that with the jobs report and stuff started to run. We were really negative on both the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. We finished slightly negative on, on all those, but not by a lot, just a little bit negative. And so it really is the dollar is the dog and everything else is the tail in this market. And so you look at the dollar. This is a pretty weak move, but it also front ran the channel. So, you know, support here held nicely at this area. This is an inflection area here, as you can see. Used to be resistance, became support, remained support. Not a great candle, but not a terrible one either. Next few days are crucial. If we really want to see the markets run, we need this to break down and get out of this channel and go lower. That would be inflationary. So not maybe great for what we want the Fed to do and ease up, but it would cause asset prices to go higher. Cause cryptos go higher, stocks go higher, etc. We also have issues going on here with OPEC. This is something to watch very carefully, where OPEC is saying we're going to cut oil production by 2 million, 2 million barrels a day. This is after the White House said they're going to increase output from the strategic reserve of a million barrels per day. So this is OPEC basically giving the Biden administration the middle finger. Like, oh, really? You want to throw out a million a day? We'll cut 2 million a day. What's up now? We can do this forever. We can do whatever we want. And that is what's going on. So there is definitely a battle there. But however, take note of this. Even on this news, oil just barely made a move. It did get out of the downward channel. It did. It got out of that. And that was a pretty ugly one. It had been going on for a while. It did get its way out. <clears throat> and you could see that was front run yesterday. That's what I'm saying. The big boys always know what's going to happen the news before it comes out. So we got out of that channel, but not really a whole lot, not a big move there, not like a huge hedge going on. In other words, the market didn't buy that this cut in production was going to be some huge market mover. And so um, I don't think you're going to see oil prices get too much higher here, maybe a little bit, but not too much. We can take, this is a daily chart, by the way. So this is a lot of data. Um, but if we take this, if we want to get some targets here, give you an idea. You know, we, we blasted through the 236 here, maybe $94. I think tops, we get close to 100 again. Tops, tops, tops. It's 10% higher from here. Um, that would be, that's my guess on like absolute highs. But based on this action the last couple of days, I, I would say don't even expect that. Probably not even that high. But if we do get up to that 105 to 107 range, that's that's the end of it for sure. Okay. So we're hoping because we know that the dollar is what's really moving everything. Uh, we kind of hope to see some weakness just so we can see a little pop here. We would like to see interest rates level off, hang out, maybe consolidate, even just going back and forth here in this range for a little while. I'm cool with that. Stability is the key. Stability is the key to help the market stabilize. And it starts with interest rates. All right. We cover everything here. I get that. Uh, we talked about this meme. Okay. This is what I was trying to finish up on. This is where I got sidetracked. I'm sorry. I'm not paying 7% mortgage. I don't want it. And then sort of the comeback is, well, rent is 100%. 100% interest, not 7%. And, um, uh, and it's it's true, except for it's not even that good. If rent was 100% interest, you could deduct it from your taxes, but you get none of that. So it's very true. It's 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 factually accurate. 
but here's here's the reality of the situation for renting it has become very similar to buying a home it is it is that kind of selective process the good homes for rent they go very fast um, people who right now that I know of who were going to sell that are deciding to rent, they're getting insane application numbers are getting crazy qualified people. Um, so buying a house, renting a house, is much easier to buy a house now than to rent a house. In fact, it's going to become dramatically more difficult to rent a home. Rental prices are going to go up. A lot of the people who were saying are moving to the right on the timeline to purchase, they're going to go rent. So the rental market is being flooded with demand right now while prices are already really high they've gone up 20 percent two years in a row so the real the bigger issue with going to rent right now is how that will damage you uh from just a cash flow standpoint from a cash reserve standpoint for when you do want to buy a year from now or whatever that's what you have to take a look at so i would say if you're going to rent make sure you rent well beneath your means rent something that you don't actually feel comfortable in this is this is old school gray beard real estate advice. Rent something that you are uncomfortable in. Problem with a lot of people is, especially who make good money, who could buy houses, is they can afford to rent something they're comfortable in. Then they end up staying there too long. Before they know it, they're there three, four, five, seven years. And they're like, well, we're, we're just, we're comfortable here. Don't rent something that's comfortable. Rent something that's beneath your means. Save money. Stay uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable while you're renting. That's part of your savvy, self-built-in mechanism for motivation to do what you know is right. Everyone knows they want to buy a home at the end of the day. No one wants to rent forever. I've never met someone who's like, I'm just going to rent forever because it's so much better. Everyone knows that's not the thing to do. So if you need to build in some accountability for yourself, rent something that's uncomfortable and inexpensive as possible. That's the best thing that you can do. Funny meme though, props to the ladies of real estate if they started it or whoever did. Um, very, very f funny stuff. Okay, links will be included. Let's get this party wrapped up, guys. You know what's happening. We're hooking people up over here. I got people re looking to refinance, take cash out, get out of hard money loans, investors. We can beat that. People wanting to buy early next year, get pre-approved now, see what's up, see where you stand, make a plan. Maybe you've already got an offer, maybe you've already pre-approved. Let's double check it. Make sure it's legit. People getting ripped off out there. Oh man, big time. Unnecessary. You can have your cake and eat it too this day and age. You can get a great deal and great service. You do not have to compromise. Call, text, shoot me an email. I'll see y'all soon.